If we look at the contents of the auxilla, then the main blood vessel is the auxiliary artery. And the auxiliary artery is a direct continuation of the subclavian artery as it passes into the auxilla. Here now we can clearly see the cervico-auxiliary canal. We can see anteriorly here we have the clavicle. We can see medially we have the first rib. And then posteriorly running along the back here we'd have, sorry, here we have the superior border of the scapula. So here's the posterior boundary of the cervico-auxiliary canal. Here's the anterior boundary and here's the medial boundary. And this forms the apex of the auxilla, which allows the auxiliary artery to pass in. The auxiliary artery is a direct continuation of the subclavian artery as it passes into the auxilla. Now, we can recognize three parts to our auxiliary artery, and these are associated with pectoralis minor muscle. Here we have pectoralis minor muscle coming from the ribs and passing to the coracoid process of the scapula. The first part of the auxiliary artery is between the clavicle and this superior border of pectoralis minor. The second part is directly deep to pectoralis minor. And the third part is from this inferior boundary of pectoralis minor all the way down to the lower border of the auxilla where the auxiliary artery then becomes the brachial artery. And that's typically at the inferior border of teres major. So if we have a look at the three parts of the auxiliary artery, then as I said, it's a direct continuation of the subclavian artery starting at the lateral border of the first rib. And it ends at the inferior border of teres major, divided into three parts. And each part gives rise to numerous blood vessels. So coming from the first part, there's going to be one. Coming from the second part, there's going to be two. And coming from the third part, there's going to be three blood vessels. So if we look at the first part of the auxiliary artery, this is between the clavicle and the superior border of pectoralis minor. We have one blood vessel. And we can see that here. That is the superior thoracic artery. Superior thoracic artery going to supply the superior aspect of the thoracic chest wall. If we look at the second part, which is posterior to pectoralis minor, we have two blood vessels. We have the thoracoacromial artery and the lateral thoracic. We have the thoracoacromial artery, which we can see here, and we also have the lateral thoracic artery which we can see here. And these are the two branches that come from the second part of the auxiliary artery. The thoracoacromial artery is a small little root that then gives rise to a whole series of blood vessels, the acromial branch, the deltoid branch, various branches that go to supply this region. And we'll detail these more when we look at the whole blood supply to the upper limb. Within the auxilla, we then have the third part of the auxiliary artery, and this gives rise to three blood vessels, the subscapular artery, the anterior and posterior circumflex humeral arteries. So the subscapular artery, we can see the subscapular artery running down in this direction, and we can see that may well go on to form various anastomoses around the scapula. We can see it running up in this direction to anastomose here, with a branch that's coming off the thoracoacromial artery. So a complicated anastomosis going on. And like I said, we'll come back to it. So that's one of the branches coming from the third, branch, the third part of the auxiliary artery. The remaining two branches to come off the third part are the anterior and posterior circumflex humeral arteries. Remember, the posterior circumflex passes out through the quadrangular space. It is accompanied by the auxiliary nerve. And these form an anastomosis around the surgical neck of the humerus. So they're the various branches of the auxiliary artery. Three parts, one artery coming from the first part, two arteries coming from the second, the three arteries coming from the third. So an easy way to remember those arteries. 
If we look at the lymph nodes, then there's a whole series of lymph nodes that are located within the auxilla. Of a whole series of auxiliary lymph nodes. And these auxiliary lymph nodes are going to receive the lymphatic vessels from other neighboring lymph nodes. So, for example, there are five groups of lymph nodes that drain into the auxiliary lymph nodes. We have pectoral lymph nodes from the anterior thoracic wall. We have subscapular lymph nodes from the posterior thoracic wall and scapula. We also have humeral lymph nodes from most of the upper limb. So most of the lymph from the upper limb are draining into these humeral lymph nodes. We have central lymph nodes, and these are beginning to receive the various lymphatic vessels from the pectoral, subscapular, and humeral. So those three giving rise lymphatic vessels that go to these central lymph nodes. And then from the central lymph nodes in the auxilla, they're going to pass up to the apex of the lymph apex of the auxilla into apical lymph nodes. So we have these groups within the auxilla that are receiving lymphatic vessels from the neighboring regions, so pectoral, subscapular, and humeral. They pass to the central lymph nodes, and the central lymph nodes then pass up into the apex of the auxilla. These will then drain into subclavian lymph nodes and ultimately into the venous system. So a very basic overview there. I don't really want to get bogged down in too much of the, the detail. But it's important that from this whole kind of chest and upper limb region, they all pass to one central lymph node, which then passes through the auxilla to the subclavian lymph nodes and ultimately draining into the venous system.